Paul would tell Timothy, be instant in season and out of season. What that means is when you see an opportunity to do something for Jesus Christ, say something for Jesus Christ, sing aloud for Jesus Christ, make a connection in the kingdom of God, you, you don't look at it as I'll do it in a minute. You look at it as I've got to take advantage of a moment. This is my moment. This may be my only shot. I've got to seize this moment. Kairos. The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. You were created to be more than you are now, to love more than you love now, and to live a life that's fully alive. Take a few minutes and join Pastor Ronnie Phillips for a message of grace that will help you live fully alive. Greetings, partners and friends. This is Pastor Ronnie Phillips, founder of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International, and you are watching Fully Alive. It is our mission to help you live free and fully alive. I want to bring you a message today. It's part one of a message I brought to my Abba's House and New Wine Global family this past September. It was Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and the Lord gave me a message titled, The Year of the Upgrade. It's from the Ascension Psalms. I believe, prophetically speaking, we are shifting from a bad season into a new season. Every person of God that survived the storm is about to receive favor from God. You're about to receive the victory you've been praying for. I really believe prayer requests are about to be answered. Lost family members are gonna to come to the faith. We are on the verge of a new season. So for the next two weeks, I wanna to talk to you about what the year of the upgrade looks like for those of us that believe in Jesus Christ. I hope you enjoy part one. The message really begins with something Jesus said, that you can't put new wine into an old wine skin. Wine in those days was put in animal skins. That was part of the fermentation process. And as the wine would ferment, the animal skins would stretch and they would stretch to the degree that they couldn't hold the new wine. Jesus would also say that no one really asks for the new wine that's used to drinking the old wine. You know, no one knows what a Big Mac tastes like till they've had one. Amen? You know, if you've never experienced kingdom, you won't know what you're missing. If you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, you won't know what you're missing. If your whole life's three points in a poem and go to the house, that's, that's all you'll long for in the Christian world. A good Sunday school program, a good program for this and a good program for that and let's play church and dress up and nobody gets saved. Nobody uh, labors in prayer all night. No, nobody cries when they're worshiping Jesus. Let's just have church and be little worldlings. As I said, we're moving in, in the Jewish calendar, the year of the open door. May I teach just a moment? Yes, sir. We're moving from 5783 in the Jewish calendar to 5784. This is the Jewish New Year this past weekend, Rosh Hashanah. Five is the number of grace, my favorite word in the Bible. What my whole ministry is based on is grace. Everybody say grace. grace. Many of us need grace. And those of you who don't need grace, you're just lying and you need it double. <laughs> In the Hebrew al alphabet, hey or hey, H-E-I, means to look or behold. Mystics say it's the divine breath or word of God. Five also represents the Torah. God's standards go hand in hand with his grace. Next, we have the number seven, which is the number of perfection completion, wholeness, and creation. In the Hebrew alphabet, it is Zion, and it can also mean a weapon, sword, or a crown. Eight, as many of us know, is the number of new beginnings, new order, new birth, new names. The Hebrew alphabet, Chet. It is the letter of life, but it's also the letter of sin, symbolized by a fence or a wall of protection. 
is what eight can mean. Sometimes a new beginning is not a good beginning. So you have to choose in the kingdom of God which kind of beginning you want. 80 in the Hebrew alphabet is pay, P-E-Y, and it means breath of testimony. The Hebrew word for 80 is also a bok, dust. God is sending his spirit through those who were created and dedicated to his service like Samuel from the time they were little. Daniel interpreted Belshazzar's dream when he was 80 years old. Moses confronted Pharaoh at 80. God's doing something. Some of you about to turn 80 or just turned 80. You're, you're not done. There's a miracle and a new beginning for you. The number four is the number of creation. It's also the number of seasons that we have. We must understand, as it says in Ecclesiastes, that seasons change. For everything, there is a season. You may not like the season you're in, but understand that it will change. You will reap a harvest if you don't quit. Four, the number of creation, the number of seasons. Four also means divine appointments, favor, worship. There were four witnesses of God listed in the New Testament. Miracles, signs, wonders, and the gifts of the Spirit. How many days was Lazarus dead before Jesus said, come forth? Four. So what is God saying to us in the prophetic code of the Psalms? As I said, the Ascension Psalms, if you go back to Psalms 118 and you look at our 2018, leading through the pandemic, if you read each chapter of Psalms all the way to Psalms 134, it reads like front page news. You need to read them. It will blow your mind. Everything listed in Psalms 122 is what we just experienced in the kingdom as a remnant and even as an individual and as a church. It talked about being betrayed. It talked about a shaking. But the good news is, and that's what I want to focus on tonight, is the good news. Psalms 124 says this, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, can I get some praise? If it wasn't for the Lord, which represents in the Hebrew, the face of Yahweh's favor turned towards us, we cried out for mercy, favor in Psalms 123, and his mercy and divine favor turned towards us. Now let Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us. How many of you have ever had anybody rise up against you? Rise up against there in the Hebrew means when enemy takes authority over us, when he has no authority over us, when we allow him to overcome us or overwhelm us or take authority that he hasn't been granted by the Holy Spirit. They would have, but didn't. They would have swallowed us up, eaten us alive when their wrath was kindled against us. The fiery breath of their hate speech was coming out of their nostrils like flaming swords of antagonism. The waters would have overwhelmed us. They would have drowned us. The stream would have gone over our soul. The venom would have conquered us like a flood and drowned us. Then the swollen waves of the proud would have gone over our soul. But blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Praise the Lord, he did not assign us to be eaten alive. There was a purpose for what we went through. Our soul has escaped, verse seven. We've been rescued as a bird. Somebody say the Holy Spirit. Understand the devil always comes after a dove. You have a spiritual moment like what we experienced last night and even this morning, understand the devil always shows up after the dove. But you are about to enter into a new realm of revelation. So when the devil comes in and says, you ain't good enough, that was fake, that was phony, you're not gonna get your harvest. He's a liar, a murderer, and a thief. And he has no legal standing over your life. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us praise to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken 
shattered into pieces and we have escaped. Our help, aid, confidence is in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Nisi, the Lord our banner, who made heaven and earth, creator Elohim there is the word used. Favor is the tangible evidence that you have the approval of God and you live conscious of God's presence and peace. I heard Bishop Jake say many years ago, favor ain't fair. And I'm here to tell you tonight, I'm not bragging on me, I don't understand it, but I walk in it. I mean, it's just not fair. I, I do, I'm blessed, my wife's blessed, my kids are blessed. I, I can't explain it. We go to an airport, we meet people we've always wanted to meet. We connect with heroes. I don't understand, but we work hard and God blesses our seed. He blesses our marriage, he blesses our lives. My dad always gets mad about it. <laughs> Not really, but he picks at me about it. He says, I can preach on heaven and 10 people get mad. You preach on hell smiling. But understand, there was a lot of pain to get to this portal. You don't know what it was like to be eight years old and to hear your dad being talked about on the news and bloody in your knuckles, fighting in elementary schools in defense of your church and your family. You don't know what it was like to have the media attack you because they hated your dad. You don't know what it's like to be falsely accused. You don't know what it's like to have people speak against your kids, try to hurt your kids because they hate your church. You don't know what I've been through to get where I am. You don't know the feet I've washed to get where I am. You don't know the times I've had to keep my mouth shut when I wanted to say things to get where I am. You don't know the sins I've had to repent of to get to where I am. The apology letters I've had to write and the things I've had to lay at the feet of Jesus to get where I am. You don't know what I've been through. If you did, I promise you, you'd be okay with the favor that's on my life now. I live in conscious awareness of God's presence in my life. I live at peace. Sometimes my face may not show it because I have not learned that spiritual gift. We live in favor, but we can increase in favor by faith and intimacy. Second Peter chapter one, verse two, favor and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, when we get revelation from the kingdom, favor comes. Favor increases for us with our knowledge of God. The closer I get to God, the more favor he puts on my life. This isn't a message on holiness, but you can't get closer to God without him transforming you. It may take some of you longer than others, but getting close to God is a transformational process. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a what? What does that creation word mean in the Greek? It means progressive change. I'm not as bad as I used to be, but I'm not as good as I'm gonna be. Kronos is a Greek word that refers to time. It speaks of minutes. Kairos, I've taught you this many times, speaks to moments. Minutes and moments. If you want God's favor and you want his best for your life, you have to learn the difference between a minute and a moment. You have to learn how to step into the anointing in a moment. Paul would tell Timothy, be instant in season and out of season. What that means is when you see an opportunity to do something for Jesus Christ, say something for Jesus Christ, sing aloud for Jesus Christ, make a connection in the kingdom of God, you, you don't look at it as I'll do it in a minute. You look at it as, I've got to take advantage of a moment. This is my moment. 
This may be my only shot. I've got to seize this moment. Kairos. In Ephesians, Paul would tell us to be careful how we walk. He'd even use a word circumspectly, which means with wisdom. Uh, you can't walk with everybody. We're ambassadors of the kingdom. We're not supposed to look like everybody else. We're not supposed to talk like everybody else. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have friends. In fact, you need friends. You need godly covenants. You need the right relationships. But you can't walk with everybody. You can't talk to everybody about the inner workings of your spirit because the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. And some of you are in covenant with the natural man and it's hindering your spiritual man. So we must first understand that a prophecy has been released. Everybody say that with me. A prophecy has been released. This year, 5784 is a prophecy for all of us. What is the prophecy? The grace of God is bringing us into a new level of maturity, recreating us into his image, separating us from the past and bringing about a new beginning. This new beginning will be released by signs, wonders, miracles, and a fresh outpouring of the gifts of God's spirit. If you receive it, say amen. amen. 5780, 5781, 2019 at the, in the pandemic through 2021, God brought destruction and division in the natural body and the body of Christ. He allowed it. He allowed it because he wanted to see the, who the real true remnant was. 5782 represents an awakening, a year of faith. We had to rely on things that we knew not of. We had to have faith. There's nothing like pastoring this large church for three years and preaching to an empty building for six weeks, looking at a camera like this, going, good Lord, how are we gonna pay these bills? How am I gonna pay 36 people on payroll? I was here by myself because I didn't really abide by all that. Not because I was being rebellious, I just can't sit still. So I was here at church one day and one of our members, I was worried about the offering and I was in my office praying and one of our faithful members texted me and said, can I come by the church? I said, sure, if you're not scared of being around me, we're not supposed to be in close contact. It's the pandemic. He said, look, my grandkids and I watched the service online Sunday and I just wanted to bring a check for $25,000 over here to make sure all the bills were paid this week. My faith began to build. And as I said, this year of the upgrade, we've survived the snare of the fowler, the attacks of the enemy, the shaking. Now we're moving in to the year of the open door, new opportunities. It's happening, but you have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. 84 in, in Strong's Concordance is Ebra, and it means the wing or a bird. Jacob was 84 when he made the deal with Laban for Rachel, but he got Leah instead. Anna was 84 when she as a widow had spent her life longing to see the Messiah, and she got to. Some of you have been praying about things forever and God's about to bring them to pass. You've been praying for a grandchild, a child, a friend to come to Christ, to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You've been praying about it forever and ever and ever. You've, you've sown into it. It's coming to pass. In the next 12 months, it's coming to pass. God's gonna reach your loved ones. God's gonna shake you. God's gonna promote you. Everything you've believed God for in the past, it's coming. Believe it by faith. This is a prophecy of upgrade. God is upgrading you, your thought life. Let this mind be in Christ that was also in Christ Jesus. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. God's gonna teach you to start looking above what you see, living above your circumstances. See, you can't look at what's going on around you. You can't even trust what you hear around you these days. You better get a word from God and a word from heaven and you better get in a relationship with the king and understand you have access to everything that the king has. You have access to everything that the king has. Listen, I don't watch the news anymore. 
I get my news from heaven. I get my news from the word of God. And you know what's happened since I stopped watching it? I'm a better listener. I'm more understanding of people that I have differences with. God's given me new relationships, new perspective. His word is revealing itself in a fresh way because I've stopped allowing this demonic media to keep me from my destiny and to keep me from what God has for me. When we come into 2024, 2024, the battle is over. When you come into 2024 on our calendar, January, the battle is over. You're victorious. And prophetically speaking, you're gonna be tempted to celebrate the fall of the people that left you, hurt you, talked about you, bashed you. Don't fall for the bait of Satan. Pray for them. Bless those that curse you. But what you will see in the next 12 months is every voice that stood against you, you're going to see vindication. Every voice, now only three people agree with me, that's fine, I get my news from heaven. Every person that betrayed you, backstabbed you, put their mouth on you, as Bishop Ote would say, there's gonna be some funerals. I don't wish that on anybody, but read your Bible. People think the unpardonable sin is suicide, it's not. It's putting your mouth on a move of God or a man of God. That's the unpardonable sin, quenching the Holy Spirit and putting your mouth on something you don't understand. The ecclesia by 2024, the church, the remnant, those of us who've been called out, the ecclesia is coming into its own in the next three months. Every enemy will have been revealed. Everything will have been fully exposed and the victory will be ours. Amen. I believe it by faith. Isaiah 43, 19, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it will spring forth, but you will be aware of it. So we must understand that a prophecy has been released. When a prophecy is released, you can reject it or receive it. I receive it, just say I receive it. But I wanna move next to a problem that Jesus revealed. A, prof a prophecy and a problem. As I said, the devil always comes after the dove. In Matthew nine and in Luke five, after identifying Jesus as the Lamb of God, this wild radical named John the Baptist, he's found himself in prison. This man who is a devout Jew, but a radical Jew, longing for the Messiah, he recognized Jesus as the Lamb of God. He stood up for righteousness, he lived clean, he fasted every Monday and every Thursday. While he sat in prison, he started to question whether or not the one he identified as the Lamb of God was really the Lamb of God. John the Baptist, the forerunner to Jesus Christ, the one who baptized him started going, listen, I'm hearing reports of this Jesus hanging out with wine bibbers. And, and he's hanging out at Matthew's house with all these sinners and he's hanging with prostitutes. There's even some evidence he was drinking with them. And John's just like wondering, like, did I miss it? He hasn't left the faith. He's just wondering because they didn't have a completed canon of scripture. They didn't have great preaching and teaching. They had to follow Jesus by faith. So he's wondering, is he the real deal? Is he the one? This one that's feasting and drinking and eating with sinners, is he the real deal? So John would tell the disciples, hey, go to this Jesus and ask him a question. Ask him if he's the Messiah or should I be looking for somebody else? 
because I'm desperately trying to understand why he doesn't fast like we do and he hangs out with people we don't hang out with and he, he does things that we don't do and he loves people that we don't love. And so John's disciples come to Jesus and they ask him a question. They said, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples, they don't fast? Jesus answered, how can the guest of the bridegroom mourn while he is still with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. Then they will fast. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm here with them. We're in a season of celebration. This is not the season of mourning. You got to know what season you're in. Hallelujah. Listen, you've got to make your way to Abbas House. We have powerful conferences here, concerts, revivals. The Spirit of God is always moving here. I want to tell you about a few things we have going on with the ministry. The first is our New Wine Global Network. We have over 20 men and women ordained in this network. If you are called of God and you'd like to be ordained or continue your biblical education, we want to tell you how you can do that. So go to my website, RonniePhillips.org, if God is calling you into pastoral or ministry. Number two, as we close out the year, I want you to get some seed in the ground. If the Lord has blessed your life, we want you to help us do mission work around the world. We are able to be on television, not because I'm the best looking guy in the world, but because of our partners and friends. So if the Lord has blessed your business, consider coming in covenant with us, coming into a relationship with our ministry. You could start off with $10 a month. Some of you could give $1,000 a month. You wouldn't even miss it. You're blessed. If you believe in this message of grace, if you believe that an upgrade is around the corner, why don't you start the year or finish the year with generosity? Be a partner with us. Listen, we need you. We have a mandate on our lives, a kingdom mandate to take the gospel of grace to the ends of the earth. We can't do it without you. Thank you so much. And don't miss part two next week. It's going to get better. I'm Pastor Ronnie. We'll see you next time. Every day, Ronnie Phillips Ministries International is delivering hope and help around the world through media, missions, and the message of grace. When you partner with RPMI, you're feeding and educating children in the Dominican Republic, helping us hold crusades in Central America and other places, and helping families here at home. You're making it possible for us to reach those who need the grace of God and a second chance. Join us in our mission. Your regular monthly partnership makes a world of difference in the impact we can make to reach the world for Christ. Go to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today or scan the QR code on the screen with your phone. Pastor Ronnie Phillips delivers help and hope around the world through missions, media, and the message of grace. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today and join us again next week for another message that will help you live free and fully alive.